Hello my art loving friends! Today's video is very exciting because I received six new Rosa Gallery paints for Christmas and I did show you them in my Christmas haul video which I'll link here and in the description box below. And today we get to add these six colors to my Rosa Gallery palette. However, the palette is already completely full so we will be switching these colors into a new palette, adding the six new ones in and playing with the paints a little bit. All right, so as you saw me hold up in the beginning here, this is my existing Rosa Gallery palette and the beautiful colors that I have here. The check marks were something I was doing when I was making up a palette, I think for Riley's girlfriend. I can't quite remember, but you guys probably remember better than me. Anyway, they just wipe off. Not that it matters because I have to redo the swatch sheet now that I have six new colors. I'm very excited for them. I did play with the colors a little bit over on my Patreon site. They get to see some things that I don't show here on regular YouTube. That's what these swatches are from. Look at this beautiful color here. Just love this. But today we'll be doing the actual swatches for my watercolor project which is where I swatch the colors in a predetermined size. I stick them in these business card sleeves and then sort them according to their hue. The ones outside of sleeves are ones that I have to still put in my computer spreadsheet and then I'll put them away. We're going to start with the golden brown, which is a PY43 and a PBR7. I poured these into pans a couple of weeks ago, more like a month, a little over a month ago, and they were very liquidy. They took a really long time to dry and I took them on a trip with me and I had to make sure they stayed really flat even though I poured them probably a week before I left. And I live in Colorado so it's pretty dry here. But they were still very resistant to wanting to dry out. However, now that they have dried out and dried down a little bit, I'll probably go ahead and fill these pans on up to the top. Maybe. I haven't fully decided yet. Next up here is the Magenta Gray. It's a PR122 and a PG17. This was one of my favorites when I was playing around over with my Patreon sporters. It didn't show a lot of granulation in that little swatch that I showed you. But we'll see if having a bigger piece of paper here, and this is Arge's cold pressed 140 pound paper, if that does anything to make the granulation come out more. So these are supposed to be their granulating paints. This one here is the Azure Green. It's a PB15 colon 3 and a PG17. Look how rich this color is. So I will limit myself to going over a color to three times. This one didn't even need that second time, but I do like to make sure the water is spread evenly so that it doesn't bloom back into that little section at the top that I keep dry. Next up here is Jade Green, which is a PB28, a PBK7, and a PY42. This is another one of my favorites. I really like all of these. I'm just partial to that magenta gray and this one in particular. Well, shoot, the velvet black is, or violet black is super nice also. I don't know, they're all really special in their own way. I really like this one. So that one only needs two coats in my opinion. This is a fun one. This is cobalt gray. It's a PR108 with a PB28 and a PBK7. I love this one. This one is violet black. It's PV19, PBK7, and PR108. Look at that. Look how pretty this is. So pretty. So darn pretty. Thank you. 
So how I add colors into a palette is I take my old swatch sheet, and it's kind of sad to do this, but I just cut it apart. And I might be able to actually leave most of this together, so I may just cut this in strips for now and then see if I have to change anything as far as the order. And these are very unique colors, so I'm not quite sure where they'll end up yet, but I can cut them apart this way as well if I need to. But I'll start by cutting them apart this way, and then I can just rearrange all of these squares or rectangles on my desk in the order that I want. I also received this landscape set recently, and believe it or not, there is a color in here I don't have, cerulean blue. So I will be pulling the cerulean blue out of this set, to put in my main Rosa Gallery palette because I want all the colors that I have in here. Here is the Cerulean Blue from the Landscape set. Granulating, three star light, fast, transparent, and it's a PB36. Can't believe out of all the Rosa Gallery sets I bought last year that I didn't have this color. So weird. But kind of cool. I have a new color I can add that did not expect to have. We'll do one more go of this. All right, our swatches are dried and labeled. They are so pretty. This jade green really is striking, isn't it? Pretty amazing, and this just has a beauty to it. I really like the gray leaning colors, and I mentioned that I think in the last video or the one right before that, actually it was the one before that. I don't know if you guys know what I mean by gray leaning. It just brings a softness to it, I think, that I really enjoy. So out of these seven colors, I know this isn't granulating. Actually, it is granulating, <laughs> ironically. Uh, it wasn't meant to be like they're highly granulating ones, but then again, neither are these three. But which one is your favorite? Tell us all in the comments below. I think it'll be fun to see how we all compare to each other and our likes. Over here is the new color arrangement for my palette. Let's see if I can turn the lights off. <laughs> it's that weird time of day. And we are going to have a nine by six arrangement in the new palette. It's going to be really exciting. There are eight placeholders for new colors which I don't have and haven't even ordered or anything, but here you can see I very strategically placed these so that the new eight colors, when I do order them, will just go in their correct spots. So I'm curious after I do the swatch sheet and you see what these colors are, if maybe you can guess which eight colors I'm going to buy in the future to fill this palette. This will be the new swatch sheet for the new palette, and I wanted to show you a little trick if you wanted to figure out how to divide your paper. This only works if your paper is narrower than the amount of slots that you need. So I need nine columns and my paper is 7.75 inches, therefore paper is less wide than the amount of slots I need. And it also only works if your paper is tall enough to handle this kind of division, but since I need nine even slots, instead of trying to divide 7.75 by nine, which gives you a random number that you're never gonna be able to divide with on a ruler, what you can do is just go from zero to nine, edge to edge. See that? And you can see where I've done it down here. So zero to nine, like that. And then you make a mark at every inch. And then when you do the lines, you have exactly nine even widths. Now this won't work for my up and down because I need six slots and my paper is 6.75 inches wide. So it's wider than the amount of slots I need. So I have to do the division in that case. But luckily that divides easily to an inch and an eighth. So I'll be able to do that really easily. Now for my favorite part, swatching out the new swatch sheet. Look how opaque that titanium white is. That's a PW6. However, when it dries, it loses a lot of that opaqueness. However, I think it's still gonna be good for highlights and making colors pastel. That's yellow ochre, it's PY43 and a PY42. Olive green here, PG17, PY1 and a PBK7. It's actually a really pretty olive green. Bright green, PY151 and a PG7. 
Not my favorite color, but it is useful in a couple of things. This one is the Cobalt Gray, one of the new ones, PR108, PB28, and PBK7. It is so pretty. This one is the Cadmium Yellow Light, a PY35. We will follow that up with the Quinacridone Gold, a PY151, PY42, and a PR264. This is a more dull Quin Gold than most of them. This one is green, PG8. I love this green. After that will be the Emerald Green, PG7, so Thalo Green. Then we'll be moving to the Cadmium Yellow Medium. This one is a PY35, beautiful yellow. All of their yellows are pretty darn nice. This is Cadmium Orange. It's a P0, P0, PO20. This one here is Cadmium Red Light. It's a PR108 and a PO20. We'll follow that up with one of my absolute favorite colors in the whole set, PO73 and PR254, bright red. This one will be followed by Cerulean Blue, that new one, PB36. We'll move to Burnt Sienna after that one, and the Burnt Sienna is a PR101. This one here is English Red, another PR101, but quite a different hue. I actually like their English Red. It's a lot more subtle than some. This here is Matter Red, PR177 and PR264 followed by bright blue, PB15 colon three. Then we are moving to sepia, PBR7, PBK7, and a PR177. Their sepia is beautiful. This one is umber, never my favorite color, but it's a number, PBR7. Pretty low tinting, you have to layer it a bit to see the color. Then we're moving over to Quinacridone Lilac, PV19. Followed by Ultramarine, PB29. Then we're doing quite the jump over here to Violet. Look how deep that is. You have to really dilute it to even see the purple in it. That's a PV23. And this one is Blue Indenthrine, PB60. I love this color. It's so pretty, especially in this range. Now we're moving back up to the top to get those in between gaps now that things are dry. Raw Sienna, PBR7, and PY42. A new one here, Jade Green, PB28, PBK7, and PY42. This is another new one, Azure Green, PB153, PG17. This is Cadmium Lemon, PY35. Followed by Golden Yellow, another one of my favorites, PY110. Chromium Oxide, beautiful granulating color, PG17. Then we're moving over to Turquoise, PB15, colon three, and PG7. Cadmium Yellow Deep here, PY35 and PO20. Followed by Flame Red, which is PO73. Another really nice color. This is Cadmium Red Medium, the typical PR108, and it is a good one. It's very pretty, bright, love it. Followed by Cobalt Turquoise, another one of my favorite colors, PB28. Cat, stay still. <laughs> the cat is moving a lot. This one is Burnt Umber, PBR7. She's in her window hammock. She can't get comfortable and it's making a lot of creaking noises. Anyway, this is Carmine, PB, PR170, colon one. Another new one, Magenta Gray, PR122 and PG17. Oh, love that one. This one is just blue, PB15. And that dinging is not your house, it's mine. My laundry's done. Golden Brown, one of our other new ones, PY43 and PBR7. My voiceover today is just foiled, I guess. Mars Brown, PY42, PR101, and PBK7. 
I'm kind of fascinated by that color. I'm not sure why. This is Magenta Rose. It's a PR122. Very pretty. Followed by Cobalt Blue PB28. Here, eventually. There you go. Now the bottom row. Neutral Black PB15 colon 1 and PBK7. We're going to follow that up with Indigo PB15 colon 1, PV19, and PBK7. Violet Black, one of our other new ones, gorgeous, PV19, PBK7, and PR108. Love it, love it, love it. All right, now looking at all the gaps I left, can you guess which eight colors I might be purchasing in the future? Let me know in the comments below. And I was in the mood to do a painting, so I brought out my Cotty Fat book and decided to do this little screensaver I saw on my computer, and it was a challenge on this paper. I love this paper. But what I was trying to do was a little bit overcomplicated for the type of paper that the Cotty Fat Book has in it, which is 100% cotton, but it's thin, it's a little grumpy about too many layers, but I still had a great time and it was a fun challenge, I can tell you that much. So I added the new colors from the palette up in the sky. I think that was the cobalt gray mixed with a little bit of the magenta gray, and I'm not sure on the blue, I added just some extra blue in there. And I'm just trying to incorporate a lot of the new colors, the granulating colors into this painting because there's rocks and mountains and grasses and flowers. So it's kind of fun. But one thing I really, really liked about this new palette, and if you're wondering what this palette is, it's an old pencil tin from Faber-Castell that I just painted white with my Krylon Appliance Epoxy spray paint and now I can use it as a palette. This was a gift to me from one of you. You sent it with some brushes in it that I have enjoyed using a lot, so thank you. I just painted it white and now I'm using it as a palette. So one of my favorite things about this palette are the big gaps. Well, they're not big, but the gaps that I was able to leave between all of the pans of paint because when I was using this before, when they were all smushed together in the Rosa Gallery 10, I had a lot of crossover color contamination because I would get the paints super liquidy. The paints, I, the paintings I was doing with that palette were big, what were they? 12 by 16, so not huge, but bigger than I often work on paintings. So I needed a lot of paint. I would get the pan really wet, get a lot of water in it. It would spill over to the other pans. And that was something I kind of had to clean up when I put the pans into this palette. There was paint all down the sides of them into other colors. So having this gap now is really nice. And in the future, I might try and do that with some of my palettes is leave some kind of gap when possible. It's not always possible and that's okay. It works fine otherwise. But when I'm doing huge paintings, this sure will be nice. And it was nice even for this size of painting. And I think I could have gone farther with this painting, gotten a little more detail in, made it a little bit more refined, but I did what I wanted to do with it that evening and went up and ate dinner with the family, you know, important things. <laughs> and when I came back to it later, I like it just fine. It's great for a sketchbook sketch painting and I actually really enjoy looking at it. It's kind of pretty. The granulating paint, that golden brown, is what I'm using in that background mountain and some of the foreground rocky parts. This is the Violet Black. That makes an amazing dark shadow color, so definitely use that one a lot. And then that's the Blue Indian 3, and I'm sticking in the base there, just having fun with any color I want. And while this is a bigger palette than I'm used to using, it wasn't so big that it felt overpowering on my desk. You know how some big palettes, you just, you can't focus with them on your desk. There's just too big. <laughs> they take up too much space. This one wasn't like that. And I think it's because the lid opens to the top and I put the pans in such a way that when I'm using the brush, it's, they're oriented the right direction. So it was all very comfortable, barely used any mixing space as it was. So no big deal there and just had an enjoyable time. The rest of this painting is a lot of details. You can see I'm using the titanium white there actually. That's kind of neat. So I sped it up just a little bit more than I have been just because it's a little intricate details, like I said, just adding in all the little dots of stuff that I wanted to add into the painting. 
And I don't know if you've noticed, but I have mixed the titanium white into a few of the colors so that I could get a little bit more moody color, kind of a grayed out, if you will, like I talked about in the beginning of the video. And it worked great for that. That titanium white just added a really nice feel to the colors I mixed it with. And that's actually both of the mixes, all three of the mixes you're seeing up in the mixing portion of the palette. Those have all been mixed together with a little bit of white. So what do you guys feel about a palette of this size? It's just, it's not too bad. I think it's about a nine by nine palette. And then when you open it up, obviously it opens up into twice that. It's actually eight and a half by seven and a half. I just measured it here. So when you open it up, it'll be eight and a half by 15. That's a wrap on the new Rosa Gallery palette. I think I'm really going to enjoy that spacing between those pans. And if the new colors that I want to add in there ever come back in stock, there'll be a follow-up video for that. I'm also making a goal for myself to paint something every day for the next 100 days. It's part of that 100 day project challenge, except I'm doing it my own way. Just I want to touch paint to paper in some way every single day which will be quite a challenge because I'm a busy person, but I'm excited to give it a try. If you want to try and join me in this challenge, start today and I'll see you in the comments below. Let me know you're joining. Even if you just take a little bit of color from your palette and make some kind of abstract scene in a small square, I think that still counts and it's relaxing. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. This was a fun one as usual. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. She sees the video I'm playing on the phone. And she just attacked it, which I missed. Oh, there you go. <laughs> she does not know what to think about the screen moving. It is so funny. <laughs> what a silly kitty. They provide endless times of amusement. <laughs>